Nah, you know who it is. Derek Diablo. Del Boy D. Del Boy Diablo. Diablo TV, like and subscribe, do things you're supposed to do. And uh, it's a bit of a somber moment in that I'm mourning the, the passing of a friend. So then I'm not really uh, going to be animated to be doing, you know, comedy type of videos and so forth for a minute or whatever like that. So in that, with that being said, something else that was sad to me at the time, it, now it's not really so sad to me anymore. Now it's just history. But uh, for all those who've been following the drama and uh, with me, with the Tommy Robinson, Stephen Yaxley, with uh, Colin Mice, Central Club Podcast and so forth from uh, my recent time in Wales, um, it goes into now telling more shoot interview style, I suppose, what exactly went on before and after the debate and scrap between me and Tommy Robinson, Stephen Yaxley. And it basically is that I had done the podcast last year for Central Club Podcast at the invitation of uh, Colin Mace. At the time, he was presenting himself like he was the top boy of the Soul Crew, like he was in Soul Crew, which obviously I found out he's not Soul Crew. But uh, at any rate, I went and done the podcast, and I can talk more about that. That's you know, I got to meet Jonathan Evans. I met other lads. I hung on Cardiff. That's when I fell in love with Cardiff. I had been staying in Plymouth. But uh, so then I come back here, and then we start talking. I had made all these ideas. Once I went to Cardiff, I made 10 different television shows for, for me and, and Colin to do. And I had said, I sort of afford them to other people, too. So, like, I was obsessed with coming back to Cardiff. And I saw the Soul Crew documentary and so forth. So, then it's like, okay, I'm, I want to come back. And that all, oh, like, in, about you paying for me. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, well, let's da-da-da. So, he's kind of, like, leading me on that he's going to pay for me to come to do to film and do other sort of stuff. But, you know, he doesn't have money. It's his dad who's backing the whole thing up. He doesn't have money. So, basically, I ended up just like, okay, I'm gonna, I earned my own money and came back. So, with you know. I was already, I was back within a few months, right? So it was meant to be that we're gonna film for a week and uh, I arrive, I booked my trip around Millwall match, which was on a Saturday, and then the prior match happened to be Wigan, so I booked in around that. So I booked the, uh, you know, three weeks or whatever it is, vacation, and cause the fact is I'm not getting paid for any of it. So it's all, you know, on my dime, let's say. And I arrive on Thursday, the Wigan match is Saturday. I arrive on Thursday. Then I, uh, he didn't pick me up or whatever. Other lads, I ended up uh, by, let's say, so we hung out Friday. Da, 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 did some filming. Did some filming on Friday and his work. And other stuff is filmed out of sequence, but that, that's not that unusual. I ended up filming other stuff later. It was meant to be a week following me around. But uh, really, his object was to get viral, some kind of viral content. So then we had written a whole week out of stuff to film, which we filmed a whole bunch of stuff. He's st sitting on it still. Maybe one day he'll release it. It's harming his own community to not release it. I don't know why. I don't, but it messes up the narrative of how I'm meant to be portrayed. Because really, I'm normally a nice guy. <laughs> I think I'm a nice guy in general. But anyway, not if I'm going to be in character mode, heel mode. So then uh, Friday is the Wigan match. And, the, and it, it coincided as God would have it. I booked my trip around Millwall and Wiggins because I'm enemies with them, enemies with them, Wigan Goon Squad. Wigan Goon Squad! So, uh, you know, I book in around that. And then uh, the match, the morning of the Wigan match, that day happens to be the Soul Crew, Carter City Soul Crew Hooligans, 40 year anniversary. It happens to be the first match I'm in Wales and everything, yeah. So, I, they threw a party for me. My mate Thorny, big up to Thorny, Mike Thorny. Check him out. It, it got all you need to so the football banners, flags, towels, anything you might want. I suppose I'll put a link to his shop below. Now then, so they throw a party for me. He throws a party. He's next door to Kesto. Big up the man at Kesto 1. Kesto's shop is next door to, you know, they're, they're, so the fact is, that's what we had shot the podcast anyway, the initial podcast. At the time, Colin and Kesto were cool. He brought Kesto to meet me. We did the whole sequence of graffiti wall, which, you know, Colin never used. Why? To hurt Kesto. But you're hurting the entire Welsh graffiti because if, if you would if you would have included, if he would have included that scene, we spent the, oh, you know, a couple, couple hours, like, walking all down the, the graffiti wall. We named all the graffiti artists. 
Castro taught the whole history of Welsh graffiti. And that was a brilliant segment. It was important to me. And then I, when, the, when the documentary came out, like it wasn't in there. And I realized because they fell out. So then they threw a party in my honor. The kids were there taking pictures with me, putting my, putting my shirt on pictures. Met a lot of soul crew lads. Oh, my God. It was amazing. And it was, it was, I wish we should have still filmed that. And it would have gave much, a lot of exposure to Thorny. But, and his business. And his spot that has all the football stuff everywhere. I didn't understand why, why Cullen wouldn't go with me. That, that's, a, that's like the first main event. And it's because he fell out with Kesto and he, he's scared of Kesto. So he's not going to turn up. But, you know, was Kesto going to attack him? I don't know. I, Kesto seems like a nice guy. Obviously, he's a heavy cookie. But then the... the so it's, that was the first thing that was a bit weird with this Cullen chap. And he's telling me, brother and brother, and they're going to use me, and they're going to make my... I'm going to make my own podcast. We're going to have podcasts. You know, who's going to have... Oh, you're going to get your own podcast under us. And, uh, so he's like telling I'm going to make money and da da da, da So... You know, Colin has his own ideas what to do with me. I have my own ideas what to do with myself. But, you know, he's, like, treating me so well. And his father's, like, you know, this big teddy bear of a guy. He's the one who held me down, if you saw. So I could never hurt that guy. This Peter, he, Peter Mace, you know, I'm not going to be cool with him now. You know what I mean? But, you know, the fact of the matter is, he's such a nice big teddy bear. He's huge, right? But uh, he's told me he's never been in a fight in his life. His dad tried to, you know, Colin tried to portray him. He's a nice guy. He's big. He's huge. He's bigger than anywhere, any other ones, but the fact is he never was in no football hooliganism. He told me he went to a mill while watching his mate, him and this other guy were scared. And they ran, and they, they, they saw a swan, so they were following the swan, and that guy thought he was chasing them. So he made it a joke to me that, yeah, about that he's never been in a fight and stuff like that. So he's a big teddy bear, and, you know, the guy like that jump, come on, Del Boy. he jump on top of me, and I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not going to hit or hurt him. So anyway, though, so the Peter, uh, they pick, it's him that picks me up, and, you know, Colin's telling me, oh, his Mercedes truck and stuff. I'm like, okay, no. So basically, he's letting me know that he got a lot of money. And he had paid for my, Peter had paid for my hotel the first time in the in the documentary. So then it's like, uh, okay, so the Wigan match, and that, there's all kinds of stuff that happens. And then we're filming every day. Knights Vintage. Shout out to the man like Jacob. Knights Vintage. Sell clothes, sell clobber and so forth. Sell vintage stuff. And that's it in the, in the Cardiff in that Cardiff Central shop they got. Uh, so, also the Mojo King. So the thing is that we're full, we, we, there's uh, the Welsh cakes, the traditional Welsh cakes. We're filming all these segments with me interacting with the Welsh people and so forth, and they're all basically baby face, meaning to say in wrestling psychology, they're all good guy. So maybe the good guy of me, the normal Derek, that's a nice guy, that does, that's not going to get as many hits as, as brother and brother, you know. So that's what they want from me, let's say. Which is fine. I like doing that too. So uh, so then it comes to, he tells me early on, he's like, listen. He's like, he's like, would you do a debate with Tommy Robinson? I'm like, of course I will. I'm like, but I said it's, it, it's pointless though because what are we going to debate? I'm not involved in polit political, uh, and nothing political anymore. I said, I have my beliefs. I said, this guy is like a political agitator. He's, that's his thing. And I said, he, and he's, he's, we could do some, we can get somebody better. I'm like, yo, we can get Boneface. We can get somebody like Combat 18. We get, you know, Hammerskins, Volksfront. We could get like somebody that's real into all the far right stuff. Not somebody like that who's, you know, paraded around by the media and he's, a, he's fake. Using a fake name. His name's Steven Yaxley. He's not Tommy Robinson, the real Tommy Robinson. So the point of the matter is I was like, yeah, I'll do it, but we can get do something better. You know what I mean? So then, uh, and, and so the morning comes and, you know, we're driving in the truck and I'm talking about Anna Abraham and I'm talking about all this other stuff. And, and, and you know, Colin's looking at me like, aren't you nervous? And they took me out, you know, the, the secret location, you know, hours away. Why is it a secret location for me, but not a secret location for Tommy Robinson and his father? So it's only secret for me. And I'm there, mama, but I'm playing along with it, though. I don't, these people are not scary. Tommy Robinson and dude Colin, and they, they're not scary. They're not, they're, I don't, I wouldn't do that in enemy territory here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't take them dudes serious, straight up. So then it's funny because there's footage, I don't know if he'll ever use it, but there's footage on the way when we're driving there. And uh, he's filming, he's like, all right, now, now we you uh, Pretend, you know, act like that we just told you that it's been a secret, that you didn't know what you're doing today, and, uh, you know. So the thing is that he figured that I'm going to say something like, oh, 
Whoa, well, like, I'll be surprised. But as soon as he starts saying, who hey, today's the secret surprise I have for you, that's his big surprise for me that day, you know? And, but he, the whole time, now, before this, he's already telling me, bro, okay, brother, I love you. He's telling me, brother, and he's telling me, I love you. I'm going to make a lot of money, big future. His dad, look how much money they have. You know, if I play along, da -da 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 -da, they, my future's going to be set. We'll go in Wales, move to Wales. He's led me on with all that sort of stuff. And he's telling me, I love you, and brother, and I love you. And it's, you know, like a woman, tell you enough, you know, I love you, I love you. And then sooner or later, you, you fall in love, and you, know, you say it back, right? Kind of like, you know? So, uh, you know, I'm thinking that this guy is, you know, that my future is together with him and Central Club Podcast and everything. So then uh, on the way there, though, but I'm still going to be me and still be my character. I'm not, you ain't paying me, first of all. So, you know what I mean? It, it, I'm not going to play along 100% with what you want out of me. It's my art form. You feel me? So then, uh... Then basically he tells me on the camera, oh, you're gonna go debate Tommy Robinson. So the way I, I already had it planned out, I had rehearsed a lot of bits. I knew the basic idea of what I was gonna do as far as making him kick off and defend and shout at the zone, I already knew that. But the night before I was with Isaac, who's, who's Welsh Antifa, who's a lovely guy. You know, grew up with the Cullen, so they're like friends. I don't know if I broke up their friendship. He starves, nephew, he's a lovely guy. I'm in a camera in the night before with him, telling him what I'm gonna do. And uh, you know, the funny thing is about that is I had cooked up a scene whereby with me and Isaac, who hates the Tommy Robinson, right? I had cooked up. I was like, "Yo, here's what we do, right? We get a, uh, you know, we get you get some other lads, and you follow us, da, da, da. and that I was gonna have the BLM come out masked up, or BLM Antifa come out like ah, to attack him, and then I was gonna save the Tommy Robinson. I was gonna save the Tommy Robinson." from the BLM and Antifa, but it was gonna be an act. But it would've went super viral and stuff like that. And then that would've set up the boxing match. So then that was my first idea. And I actually presented it to Peter and Colin uh, to, and their business partner, Mike, in the office. And when I said that, I was like, yo, here's what we can do. You want a viral video? Here's what we can do. Now, obviously, I didn't know the idea he had that, you know, he didn't tell me. Yeah, the place I'm taking you has a boxing ring. And I got this idea from from uh, Kesto that he already had Alex Reed, uh, uh, card of drag queen versus uh, Tommy Robinson, left versus right debate and boxing match. That idea was already, so I didn't know any of that. So, you know, it's not like he's being forthright with me. He's what, souping me up, you know, and playing on my heartstrings and everything like that. And also waving money in my front of my face. I never got any money for it. He got a lot of money. That's his biggest video. And it's 45 minutes and look how much of the footage. He's, Cullen and his father have made lots of money on me. They didn't pay for my... They didn't pay for nothing. I paid for my my flight, my hotel. He bought me a couple of dinners and stuff like that, and you know, gave me some gave me some bits and bobs, some used stuff and everything like that. But they didn't pay me anything. So, thing about it is, uh, now. So let's say we're at, we're we're at that morning, and now we're on the way there. I remember the in the the the, the Cullen, I'm talking about Anna Abraham. He's like, "Aren't you nervous?" I'm like, "Nervous about what?" And he's like, eh. "He's like, man, this chain gang shit." I'm trying to tell him, like, man. I'm like, yo, you guys are building this guy up into somebody he's bit than he's really bigger than he's. I say he doesn't know anything about politics. I've demonstrated it. You don't know the basics. High school kids know more than him about basic politics. Don't know the difference of Marxism, Leninism, and 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 Marx, original Marxism. Don't know any of the history of Antifa. Anyway, so the, I'm saying this guy's not the real deal. He even has a fake name. That's not the real Tommy Robinson. His name is Stephen Yaxley. He copied the real Tommy Robinson, who's the leader of the Luton Mix. So I already told him that I think the guy's a jabroni. I hadn't looked into him that much, to tell you the truth. I know who he is. I, know, I don't rate him. I don't respect him. I don't think he's anything. He's, he's playing on heartstrings of people as like he's defending white people or something like that. He's not. He's doing the opposite. He's made it worse for everybody. He's only interested in, in helping himself. So anyway, I don't respect the guy, and I don't rate him, and I already know he doesn't know how to fight. He can't fight. He will kick off, though. He will fight. Or tried to, especially as security guards and stuff around him. But every hooligan, I already know loads of people know him. They say, hey, he can't fight. He'll kick off. He's game, but he doesn't know how to fight. So he's my size, doesn't know how to fight, not trained. So I, I can control a situation with a person like that. Now, you put me with Jonathan Evans, you know, Carter City Soul Crew. You know, you put me with some other lads I'm friends with. You know, I'm not going to be able to control what goes on. I wouldn't be able to walk into that situation with a sort of confidence and such a calm demeanor, so to speak. So anyway, so now we, you, we do the debate, and I had my plan going into it, and there was a ring there. Cullen obviously wanted us to box for his podcast for free, which for, it would have been for free for me. 
whatever happens, da da da. Now, I don't want to box there because I want to get paid by the zone boxing. You know what I mean? I want to do a real proper fight. And the Tommy will get paid too. It's the same deal. We get 50 50. Like, we get the same exact deal. Both of us become millionaires in one boxing match. But obviously, Cullen wanted that boxing match for his own podcast. But this, this Yaxley guy. He, he bottled it. He took off. Once I took my shirt off and I got serious, and then I see, I see like, okay, now it's time. Now, like, the guy's out there walking around. They're filming him cutting promos, and there's a ring right there. Here's the referee. I'm like, all right, I see what's, what's happening. So I take my shirt off, and then, no, oh, no, 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 put your shirt back on. But once he saw that, once the Yaxley guy saw me with no shirt and getting my real and talking for real, he left. That was the end of him. And then, so here's the thing. Big Ram, the, the, the guy who, who's the referee, uh, Colin, Peter, the cameraman who wants to remain neutral for now, all of them all heard the same thing. All of a sudden, then it starts being that, once I took my shirt off and that, and then this guy starts being, oh, okay, yeah, uh, I'll come back next week and we'll have a boxing match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then him and Colin, they're filming that. Why don't they use that footage? Where Tommy Robinson is saying, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'll be back in, in a week. We'll have a boxing match in a week, in a week. What do you mean? What is this? We're going to have a boxing match in a week. Cullen fancied that he's going to be a promoter of boxing, and that was going to be his first match, because the thing about it is, then the Yaxley leaves, and then we come and we're laughing, we shot other footage, as you can see, and I was happy with what went on. I didn't know what mentality Cullen had with it, but I knew we created, you know, I, I orchestrated and rode out it. I didn't know exactly how I was going to go on, but I knew I was going to make him kick off and defend it. Now, if I would have got hurt, I would have had to really. I would really fought. I would have got angry, but I was still playing around the whole time until I seen he kept talking, and I was like, okay, I see what this is building up to a boxing match in that ring where there's gloves already, and here's a referee. And then once I got ready, then oh, then he left. Okay, whatever. So then that's all cool and everything, and then that's when I start trying because I try to tell Cohen's a dumb guy. He's not really a smart guy. It's his father who's smart, and then he's just a. He's already invested, so he's his own kid. What are you gonna do? And he's already wasted all you know hundreds of thousands of pounds on heroin and of his father's money, he's using all his father's money for this, so the, the, Peter's not in an enviable position. So the thing about it is, um, afterwards now, afterwards now I'm telling, because I tried to tell the Cullen to get, the, when Tommy was in there, and when Cullen was in, I told him, I was, they had they made me sit in the truck for three hours, while they, you know, two hours while they set up. And then, you know, the, the Axley's running back, why are you running to carry your book in? He was trying to look in at me, in, but I was in the black the truck. Anyway, so then, the thing about it is, I tell him, I told him ahead of time, I'm like, yo, get the cameraman out. I want to talk to you guys. I wanted to talk to Conan and Yaxley, to Rob, Tommy Robinson, right? And I was going to tell him, I'm like, yo, I'm already in negotiation with the zone boxing. Let's do this. What I would have did is I would have did the exact same sort of thing, just told him to act like himself. So everything would have come out identical to what came out, other than that we, I, my idea would just be that I would have stood up like I did and spooked him. I had it hollow floors. So I spooked him by, boom, stamping on the ground. And yeah, that he tries to come at me, and whatever, I would defend, but yet, not that I'm going to get pushed down, the other guy jumps on top of me. That's one of the oldest school things to do. And gang stuff, you say, you say oh, yeah, I got a beef for that guy over there. He said, oh, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go swing on him, you break it up. And when your friends are breaking it up, you're taking off on the guy. And then, oh, no, 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 it's one-on-one. -on -one. You're really you're holding the guy down, and that's an old trick. So they try to do it to me, and, they, you know, it had moderate success. It's just that it wasn't effective. The guy can't hit hard enough. He got a clean punch when I was being held down one side of my face. I can go into that one. That's interesting. Because then the Cullen pushes me and instantly his father jumps on top of me and then the other one's attacking me. And initially, my face, my face is under, Peter's on top of me and my face is exposed with no arms on this side of, Cull of Peter's body. So my head is exposed and now one punch come down. I said, uh oh, this is when he actually had, he had a, like, imagine, I can break brick, you know, like boards, all that kind of stuff. Straight punch, like ground and pound, with somebody's face unprotected. Oh, I said, oh no, here it comes. But boom, and no effect. And then he's still taking shots. I'm like, okay, well, I'm not gonna. So I have one arm free on this side. I have no arm free on this side. I'm not gonna bite Peter or do anything to Peter. You know, he's gonna come down and you tell. So I move my head to the other side, and now I can defend with one arm. And I started grabbing, I started grabbing the Yaxley's jacket to pull him in with one arm under Peter. I was gonna guillotine him or gee choke him. But either way, I was bringing him towards me. And then, uh, you know, then the Ram, we talked about it afterwards. We did an interview. And the Ram said, I saw you. So he, Colin has that footage. The cameraman knows it. Peter knows it. He said, yeah, I saw what you doing. He knows jujitsu. He said, I saw, these guys don't know jujitsu. So he says, you know, laying on your back, pulling guard, that's jujitsu. 
<laughs> anyway, so he says, he says, yeah, I saw what you're doing, you're just pulling him in. That's why he started breaking the, that's why he choked the Tommy, the Yaxley, because I was pulling the Yaxley in with one arm to Gee choke, but I was defending successfully rather easily with one hand. He, he got the only that one punch on me, the other ones, I, he, he didn't connect. So it was rather easy for me to defend in that situation, and it all came out good, I thought. And then I'm trying to tell these guys afterwards, listen, I'm already in negotiation with, now Tommy had left. I'm telling these guys now, the, the Peter and the Colin, like, yo, I'm already in negotiation with the zone boxing. Now we can do this. And so now we're in the car afterwards. We're talking about the footage. We knew we, something good. And then he got Tommy on the phone, and I'm in the phone. I'm with Peter. And we're still like, this is awesome. Like, I'm getting a podcast under you. We, this was great. We created a viral moment. You've been bothering me all week about a viral moment. We got your viral video. Bam, I thought I did great. And then we're driving, and then it starts being that. And then he's like, he's like yeah. He's, he's, all, he's, he, he's, he's like, yeah, we got we got Diablo here with us now. He's like, oh, he's with you? You know what I mean? I, they drove me two hours by myself. Who else, who else am I going to be there with? I don't even know where I am by myself. So, and then uh, then I, I said, let me talk to him. I said, you all right, Tommy? He says, yeah. And maybe that was weird for him. I'd already talked to him on the phone before that, too, which they're not going to tell you now. But anyway, that, we'll go into that another time. So I said, trying to smarten the guy up, try to clue him up in the wrestling terms. They got something going on here. Make some money. Do the, instead, he, look what he's done. Anyway. Why not? Why wouldn't you take care of op op this opportunity? Biggest opportunity either one of our lifetimes to make money. It's already like sitting there waiting for us. Anyway, because he's, he's scared. He can't fight. He won't fight one-on-one -on -one to anybody. Anyway, so the point is, I get him on the phone. I'm like, listen, Tommy. I said, you all right? He asked the boy. I said, listen. I said, you did great. I said, listen, mate. I'm already in negotiation with the zone boxing, Lee Eaton. I said, I was already in negotiations to fight on the undercard. I said, now we're the main event, bro. We're going to be millionaires. I'm gonna, I got a boxing match. He says, all right, double. He says, make it happen. And now Peter and Cullen are witnesses of this. If they want to admit it or not, Peter is, I don't know. I don't think he's going to lie about any of this. If, if my friend Neil Mack, Neil McInnes, sold proof, he asked him, that's one of his mates. You ask him. I don't know. It, this is not a secret. It, this is not a lie. Have them people take lie detector tests. So then I got I got the actually on the phone. So this is the first time he agreed to the match. Because he agreed. I says, listen, we got a match. We'll become millionaires. It's going to be a main event. Get other hooligans on it. I already got me in negotiation. He said, all right, Del Boy. He said, make it happen. He said, hey, one more thing, Del Boy. I said, what? He says, I'm going to smash your fucking head in. I said, okay, brother. Great, great, great. That's the spirit, you know? So the thing is that on the, this drive home now, it starts getting sour with me and Colin because he's talking about the Lee Eaton and the zone box. <coughs> and he's talking about some. He's talking about some. Why do you keep talking about this Lee Eaton? I don't give a fuck about Lee Eaton. I said, what do you mean? He said, he's another promoter. And that's when it first started dawning on me. Wait a minute. You fancy yourself you're a promoter, a boxing promoter? He never promoted boxing. That was going to be his boxing promotion. So then he gets forced to basically, because he actually left without doing the boxing match, he got forced to, to package the, the promo as a scrap. You know, and then he starts to, murder. people telling people in the third, murder. I'm thinking, okay, I'm playing along with it. Kayfabe, you know, means wrestling, don't break the character, don't break the storyline. And at this point, the storyline's not broken. I'm not talking online. I'm letting him put out all the content. I'm letting Tommy Robinson talk. I'm not saying nothing because of kayfabe. Kayfabe wrestling code, you don't break character. I'm staying in the... In the in, but then, was, oh, everything was good, pretty much. But then we started walking, me and the Cullen, and right, he's got his phone blown. I'm not even answering mine. Da -da -da -da, I'm letting it... I'm letting it... Because it, 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 I figured this boxing match is coming up. So I'm letting, you know, I'm letting it to, the, to sign the contract. Let everybody say everything, hype it up, hype it up, get a contract, bomb. Then I'll start talking. That was my idea. But then we need Cullen to walk in to the Owen Glinder where he works, next to where he works, whatever. And uh, it so happens, this way we're walking, and he puts he puts Dante Hawkins on the phone with me, talking them yids. And then uh, I'm laughing my ass off talking to, ta to Dante Hawkins, telling him what happened. Telling him what went into it, and, da -da -da, and I'm telling him, that yo, I'm, they're gonna give us my own boxing, hooligan boxing, main event, Tommy Robinson, first Diablo. I want you on there, brother, you be the co-main event, heavyweight, da 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 So then this Tommy Robinson guy, he's holding us all back from making money. All, Cause all hooligans that I have, and other characters that are related to hooliganism, and the casuals, clobber lines and everything, we'll all make a lot of money, and it'll bring out a whole new league of fighters, but I need him. I don't have another credible opponent, or let's say somebody who's famous enough as him. So. I told just the truth, the well, same thing I tell all you guys. I, and it's funny to me and Dante Hawkins, that he's a fighter, but Cullen's not a fighter, and Cullen's not a hooligan. This guy's a hooligan and a fighter, and he's legit, and he's a, a gentleman is what it looks like to me. So me and Dante, I think, relate more. You know, he's asked sometimes to, to Cullen, oh, is Diablo the real deal? What's Cullen gonna know? 
Real deal of what? Anyway, so then uh, I started telling it to Dante. And after that, that's when Colin turned on me. And, uh, oh, you know, you're trying to say, you know, and I got a serious platform. And da -da 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 -da. I'm like, huh? And I look at him, I says, me. I said, do you really think that was a real fight? I said, are you joking? I said, you were there. I said, you reckon that was a real fight? I said, are you serious? Oh, no, 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 no. And he starts, like, huffing and puffing. I got a serious platform. And so I say, okay, so this guy's going to package that. Uh, okay, whatever. And even still, it wasn't so bad. But uh, what ended it with me and Colin is, uh, and it made me sad. You know, uh, to be honest, I thought it was my brother. I love you. He kept saying, I love you. It's not, no, you know, you don't just tell another man, I love you. You know, well, this, we have a future together, man. You, I, this is it. Like, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a, a podcast on whales, all this other stuff. So then, uh, you know, then it's now, it so happens. Dropkick Murphys had played the night before. I said, why don't we go film there? That's my mates from Boston. Oh, you'll be able to say, oh, we couldn't do it. All right. So it happened to be that they played two nights in a row, unbeknownst to me. So then Owen Glinder, I walk in there with some other boys, blah, 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 blah. they're taking photos. And then I say, Skinhead come in, my mate Nidge, he's so crew. <laughs> Cheers to a man like Nidge. So crew Skinheads, Cardiff, Skinheads, Cardiff, Antifa, proper OG guy like my age, feel me, lovely guy. Anyway, so the Nidge walks in to the Owen Glinder, and uh, he's got Ascot, Fred Perry, uh, sweater, you got ox bloods, you know, you got anti fat tattoos. And everything. I said, I see that geezer, he's, he's got chop. I said, Oh, he's skinhead. And he said, Oh, yeah. and, I, and he didn't act like, you know, skinheads, we don't jock each other. So I walk over to him, and he's with other skins, lovely people, this war. And I says, I says, All right, skinhead, but, uh, yeah, all right. I says, I'm Diablo Diablo. He says, I know who you are, though. I said, Oh, shit, I met the other skins. So now, Colin is there trying to film us, like interacting. And these people don't want to be filmed. They said some stuff, but he didn't even use it. But, you know, but they don't care about all that social media stuff. We don't exchange information. We don't, we're beyond all that. Skin has, was, a, was a culture before they ever had any, all this internet and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, that man and I did it, and then he cut it, and then it's like, now it's like he, he's trying to, like, get my attention. I'm already hanging out with these guys, and I'm ready to go. I'm like, Dropkick's playing tonight? Ah, I'm going. Now I'm hanging out with my skinhead family. So he hasn't seen me in my skinhead family yet. I just met them, but they're my family. We know each other for, from our culture. They know who I am. I know Cat, if I know the Antifa, I know the oppressed. Of course, so we're family, we're cousins already. So don't you know, it was at that point when that Cullen chap tried, tried to start getting live. And he said, come over here, old boy. And now he starts getting loud, loud, loud in the own glinder. That's what he does, he intimidates people, not me. You know, you can't intimidate me, that guy. <laughs> but uh, he's like a Stay Puft Marshmallow man, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, and you saw what happened to that guy in the Ghostbusters, that will be the same. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, then the, oh, 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 because, oh, oh, and he's getting a oh, man, I'm like, whatever, bro, I'm like, Psh. you know, he's tripping on me, and then the people in the bar, oh, you guys need to calm down, we're gonna call the police, and then I said, you need to stop it, so the other people had to intervene, and he says, come here, Dale boy, and he takes me into the staircase of the Owen Glinder, so just me and him in the staircase now, and at this point, I'm still like, I'm like, dude, what are you so upset about? I was like, I thought that, you know, I'm like, damn, I thought I did good for you. Oh, no, because this. I'm like, yo, I'm not going to follow your same narrative. I said, I ain't out there posting on nothing. I said, I did this so we can get this boxing match. You can be involved in it. We can use Central Club. No, bruh, bruh. And he starts talking loud, loud, loud. He says, girl, boy. And he tried to do this to Testo before he tried to do this to other people. This is what he'll do. He'll talk loud and huff and puff. And if he doesn't get his way, then he'll put his two hands on your shoulder. And he's big. He's what, 6'4", 6'5", 300 pounds? He's a big guy. So what? I've beat up a lot of big guys my whole life. There's no big deal to me. So he puts two hands on my shoulder. Listen, Dale. Now he's got his hands on my shoulder. Now you're touching me. We're in the staircase. You're talking loud. This is about it. You know, now, now, I, now I says, I said, listen, mate. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, because da -da 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 -da. I said, what? I said, like, I thought, I thought we're brothers. No, I ain't your brother. I thought you loved me. I don't love you. Fuck you. And when he said that, then the, the emotional things that he had been pulling on that was had, had me emotionally conflicted, then that was over. Now I just see I'm with this big dude. Now it's a prison situation. Now we're in a... And then I started getting ready, and I was about to go into his jaw. I don't know what I was going to do from there. I started getting back in my stance, and I started squaring up, and I'm used to punching big guys like that. And I was about to go into his jaw, and then his whole demeanor changed. <laughs> then he turned his face like a woman, and then he gets on his phone. When I'm, I'm ready to punch him in the face. We're, in the, we're by ourselves. You already brought me in here in the staircase, and I'm ready to punch him. And then, uh, then he turns like a woman and drops his shoulders, and <laughs> he calls his wife. His wife, 
Is she gonna lie about this? I don't think so. She seemed okay. I never disrespected her. He disrespect my missus. That's why I don't like him. I got a problem with him still. But I never disrespect his missus. He puts his missus on the Who does that? Who starts a fight with somebody? And then when the other person gets ready, then you turn and beg. Oh, oh, the old boy's kicking off on me. She's like, what? What? You know, because this happened. She's like, what do you? She said, Did you knew this was gonna happen. She said, what do you expect to happen? Putting those two guys together, whatever. She didn't know what I was gonna do, but she knew was gonna, he was doing it deliberately. So he puts his wife on the phone to me. No, the old boy's kicking off. She's like, what? I'm like, whatever. And these guys are talking. About and then that was the end of it. And then from there, my already my skinheads already left for the Dropkick Murphys concert, and I'm just sitting there, and it's a bit of a heartbreak. A bit of a heartbreak. You know, I start, I start crying pretty much. You know, because you know this is somebody that I thought was my brother. Now he loves me, and I'll say, oh, fuck you, I don't love you. So he he uh, he took advantage of me emotionally in some way. Uh, and whatever, I'm not embarrassed to say it because I, I thought we were brothers, you know. And then, uh, but I say he's not a brother of anybody. He's not that kind of person. He's not a hooligan. He's not a skinhead. He's not a lad. He's not a gang. He's not in brotherhood. He's just another a junkie that that is, you know, trying to make money for himself. Whatever. He do, he doesn't help people for free. And the job he have helping addicts, he gets paid. <laughs> this is a job. So whatever. But the uh, fact is, then it, you know, when, when when that came, then I ended up going. And then uh, he was like, come on, down boy, come on. And I was upset. And I brought a tear to my eye. But I started walking. I was like, f this guy, you know. And then I went to Dropkick Murphys. I knew Dropkick. And when I went to Dropkicks, everything changed. I saw my skinhead family, and I had the best time in Dropkick Murphys show with all those lads. It was amazing. Then afterward, I went to Canberra, and I saw the Isaac, told Isaac about everything. Wait till you see this. We were laughing. It was karaoke night. I'm singing Borstal Breakout, everything like that. So uh, then the next thing is we're supposed to film the Mill Wall match. I guess we could conclude here. We're supposed to film the Mill Wall match on Saturday. So I go the, the next day to have, on the invitation of Mr. Annis Abraham, the millionaire hooligan, lovely guy, respect to Annis, and Mr. Jonathan Evans, Evo, <laughs> arguably the UK's top hooligan, <laughs> a serious cat in it. But uh, I, I went to breakfast with the, next, the, the two of them the next day, and they're looking at my face, and oh, we don't see, don't have any marks. And I told them, and I made friends, I'm hung out at the pub. And that's how I started bonding, really, with the, with the Mr. Annis Abraham, and more with the, with the Evo, who I'd already met and hung out with, right? And then it's the next day for Mill World. And then I had told, and now it's like, the, 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 the Colin's gonna be there, and they want me to like be friends with Colin uh, uh, like publicly because obviously it's to, it's to keep the group together in that respect, yeah? So then the next day, now it's a Millwall match and there's a protest. And I go with the protest with Bluebirds, Bluebirds Unite. I go there with Anna Abraham and uh, Jonathan Evans and Nilsey and some of the other boys. I go with them, understand? And now we're there looking at a bill and the protest. We go to the match. That was another great tale, which I've told a little bit, a bit about. I'll tell more. So basically it's at the match. On the way to the match, I'm walking with Jonathan Evans. He's like, you know, and I, I don't know if he, would, I don't think he'd mind me telling. He's just, you know, he said, at the end of it, he's like trying to get, they're trying to make me and, and Colin make up. I'm like, nah. And he says, at the end of the day, you're pals. I said, no, we're not. And then I told Jonathan Evans the same story I'm just basically telling you about this whole thing about, no, we're not brothers, fuck you, and try to press up on me in the, in the thing. And then uh, that whole thing right there, and he says, I understand now, Dale. And that was also the time I got to tell these guys that, yeah, there's Tommy Robinson chap, you know, like, you know, it's not, this, it's not the real Tommy Robinson that wrote the books that was the leader of the, the Luton Migs. They're like, huh? They didn't know that. The guy's passing himself off. How does anybody, how does anybody call yourself a hooligan, a football hooligan, if you know that this Stephen Yaxley, imposter Tommy Robinson, is not the real Tommy Robinson? He took, he stole that guy's name. How, how, how does that work? Somebody else comes out and call, starts calling himself Jonathan Evans, and then the hooligans are gonna go along with it? What do you mean? Yeah, I've exposed it. This whole thing is exposed. So it hasn't worked out for what Colin wanted or whatever. But hey, it's my stuff that I wrote, that I created. It's the number one v uh, videos, views on Central Club Podcast. And then here's the thing. I'm not, when I was there, I was ready to fight Colin. You feel me? And I had to, you know, I, people took my side of it. I felt like the community did. I was ready to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. But now that I've left, I don't got no problem with that jabroni. He can do whatever he wants with the rest of his life. He's stuck with being himself. I get to be me. And then I'm not trying to start a problem with anybody in Cardiff, unless they got a problem with me and it's one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't got a problem, and he's important to the community. So use him, let him do his thing. If he invites you on a show, you know, get on the show and everything like that. But uh, like I told Jonathan Evans, I can't make art with that dude anymore. I can't do anything with him anymore. So <laughs> respect and cheers to everybody out there. Uh, you know, you only live once in this lifetime, so make the most of it. Enjoy your time with your people. Cheers.